Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. Okay, guess what? We're gonna jump right into it. Y'all see from the description below, it says, um, silk press on naturally curly hair. So as you guys can see, my client does have some beautiful, tightly coiled hair, but that's no problem. I'm gonna show y'all how to get this hair smooth and silky in no time with minimal products. So as you guys will notice, I'm putting oil in my client's hair. I love to use the hair oils by Matrix. They're not too thick. They're not too, um, I don't like, they're not heavy. And they're also safe for color treated hair, which a lot of my clients have color treated hair, but it works on everybody's hair. The first thing that you notice, I did spray, um, you see that pink bottle over in the corner there? That is our Miracle Creator Leave-In Conditioner Spray. I love it. It has 20 different benefits, but the main thing that I look at is that it's a heat protecting, y'all. It protects your hair up to 450 degrees. You hear me? You need that heat protection, um, especially if you live in a desert like I do. Um, even if you're not putting heating tools in your hair like curling irons or flat irons, you just need to protect your hair from the, the UV rays if you're going to go outside. And you're going to go outside. So protect that hair. The last thing that you saw me put in my client's hair is the smooth setter. Um, by Matrix and what that's gonna do is gonna help to smooth out the, out the cuticle before I go in and blow dry the hair now I don't know where they doing this at but through the rumor mill there's, there's some stylists out there that's not prepping and priming that hair before they go in and put the blow dryer in there and and start that process and what you will find when you do that the hair is not gonna feel hydrated um, when you go to do the silk press, it's not gonna look silky. It's not gonna feel silky. It's just gonna be like a. Uh, it's just gonna be like you blow dried your hair, and that's it. That's all. Um, what you guys will see me doing here, it is very key to make life easy for yourself and section off your client's hair. Um, I like to take small subsections and just twist them out. Do a little twist out. You could do a braid, but I like to get through my work. Um, time is money, so I got to get through my services relatively quickly so I can respect. My client's time and then I can stay on schedule um, here at the salon studio so I like to do subsections and do just um, do like a two strand twist is what I do you guys will see me in a little bit take a paddle brush and use that to blow dry each subsection but what I want you guys to see I'm gonna speed it up because nobody likes drawn out long ass boring videos <laughs> excuse my French one thing you will learn about me I do have a potty mouth but I'm working on it um, make sure that you make life easy for yourself because you want to be able to uh, get through this relatively quickly don't just pick up a section of hair and think you that you're gonna uh, blow dry through that is not gonna work honey so as you can see I'm taking my time I'm combing through each section each section is hydrated each section is protected so this is getting ready to be a bomb blow dry so it starts at the sink first then it starts with the blow dry you gotta have a bomb blow dry before you can have a nice silk press in a minute, I'm getting ready to go ahead on and speed this video up so that you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. I just wanted you guys to see at least the first couple sections. Okay, so bear with me because this is my first time recording in this uh, type of format. So I didn't realize that my goal is to have you guys see everything that I'm doing. And the way the camera was positioned, it kind of cut some of the, the, the video off, but you guys see the gist of it. So basically, I uncoiled my um, two strand twist on one of the sections, and I'm just taking my blow dryer and my paddle brush. And if you notice, I am um, the brush and the blow dryer is going in the same direction. The reason that you want to do that is um, to uh, aid in the blow dryer helping to close down the cuticle which is why you want to go downward with the brush in the way that you see me doing now so what you will do you'll take your time um, I feel like if you have a really good blowout this makes for a really good press um, if you're if you're if you're done with your blow dry and you see how it's kind of poofy right there if you're done and you just go to blow dry, your flat iron is going to be poofy. So you're making your life easy with the blow dry as well. I try to get it as smooth as I can up to the base of my client's head. And then I just blow dry the client's hair in this matter until I'm done with each section. As you guys will see, I did not uh, section off each area in um, any specific format. 
without rhyme or reason, I kind of just picked up a section and did a two strands twist. Um, the goal is to just be able to uncoil the twist, blow dry that section, move on to the next. So here, I will go ahead and speed this process up so that you guys can see what I'm doing and see what the blow dry looks like prior to flat ironing her hair. Okay guys, this section, this part, what you see me doing is very important when you're doing a silk press. Now it's optional. I like to use a hot comb for some of my guests. It depends on, it actually depends on the client's um, hair, how long it is. Like if it's long enough for me to catch with my flat iron, then I don't need a pressing comb. But if I feel like I can't um, uh, grab the client's hair with the flat iron, then I will proceed to using a uh, hot comb, which you'll see me doing here in a little bit. Um, just make sure that you put your blow dryer on a cool setting and make sure those edges are completely dry because that is not going to be very comfortable for your client if you put a hot comb on her edges and it's still damp. That is a no-no, sis. So I'll take my little um, wax stick by Care Care and I will just go ahead and kind of graze the edges a little bit as you see me doing here. Um, and what this does, this is going to help those little baby hairs lie down for you when you go ahead and take your um, pressing comb and apply it to your client's hair. Now what I've used, I've actually gravitated away from using uh, a stove iron to using an electric hot comb, an electric pressing comb. Um, one of my neighboring stylists hit me up to that and I'm so, so forever grateful for her for turning me on to the uh, electric uh, heat comb. So, or pressing comb, or whatever you want to refer to it as. So that's what you see me doing here. As you guys know or remember from beauty school, the back of the comb is what is straightening out your hair. I usually only like to use the straightening comb or pressing comb around my client's edges. Yes, make sure your guest uh, holds down her ear because you will burn them and that is not comfortable. So yes, the back of the comb is what is being used to smooth those edges out, baby. And then once I smooth the edges out, then I will just proceed to um, starting the, the flat ironing process. I sometimes like to get in there, get in that part area too with the, the pressing comb. Just kind of smooth that out. As you guys can see, this blow dry. I'm trying not to talk as much, but <laughs> I like to walk you through what I'm doing so you know exactly how to recreate this look on your guest. Um, as you guys can see, the, the hair is just blow dry, but look how smooth her hair is just from a blow dry. A lot of my clients are like, oh my gosh, my hair is actually pretty straight with just the blow dry, Gina. You could do it too. Yep, just go ahead and smooth those little baby hairs out and then you're good to go. And then after I get done with the back, then I just section off to begin the process of flat ironing my client's hair. And I will show you a technique just here in a couple minutes. When you start, or before you begin to flat iron your client's hair, you wanna make sure that your subsections are the width of your flat iron. If your section is, is bigger than the width of your flat iron, then you'll notice that in like the middle of the, I call it like the sandwich area, then the hair is gonna be too poofy and it's not gonna be as silky and smooth. So you notice I'm taking subsections, the width of my flat irons. I don't know if you guys use Cricut combs, but I love this comb. It's like my favorite um, tail comb. 
because it's so thick and durable. I use it like for everything. See that? You want to take the width of your flat iron and make sure the width of your subsection matches that. Anything more than that is going to make a way for a poofy flat iron. Okay, don't come for me. I'm, I'm looking at my flat irons now. I've gotten my money's worth and I've gotten some good usage out of that. I have to go in there and do the old school method of cleaning my flat irons. It's a buildup of product on there. I'm just gonna drop, drop some gems real quick. The way that you can clean your flat irons to make them look fresh and new again. Um, while they're hot, just take a towel. Um, make sure that your hands are protected because you will burn yourself. Um, take um, your flat irons, make sure they're hot. Take some relaxer, this is the old school way of cleaning those flat irons. Put it on there, wipe it off with a towel, and then once it's cool, you can neutralize the, the blade. I mean, put some neutralizer shampoo on your blade and wipe it off to make sure there's no residue of relaxer um, before you use it on your next guest. But you can get <laughs> rid of all that product buildup by using that old school method of cleaning your flat irons. So don't come for me. I know what they look like. I love my flat irons. And for people that are scared of smoke, don't be scared. What you see is the um, the products that you have infused in your client's hair when it was wet, um, heat being applied to it, so that's why you have smoke. Some people are scared of the smoke. Oh my gosh, it's too much smoke. Well, that's product, honey. The client's hair is not burning, I promise you that. If you're burning, the client's hair is gonna sizzle. It's gonna literally burn off, and that's not the goal. There's the comb that I was telling you guys about. All right, sit back and enjoy. Okay, so here we are finalizing um, my guest silk wrap or silk press, if you will. So after you're done flat ironing your client's hair, then you'll take a power brush or whatever you're comfortable with and you'll just wrap her hair. Um, what I like to do based off of the parts, if her hair is going in the direction like more toward the right side, like her part is on the left side, I usually try to wrap my client's hair the opposite a direction of their part because the um, silk wrap it gives you like an old school feel of a wrap where the hair kind of hugs your face basically all it's doing is kind of locking in that sheen to make it feel silky and it gives off a lot of sheen so um, in my opinion just my opinion the silk press stems from a really really good flat iron so if you don't have a really good flat iron you're not, a, you're not gonna get a silk wrap because your client is literally only under the dryer for five minutes, but majority of your time was, splint, was spent with the flat iron and the blow dry. So come on out. Five minutes does not determine whether or not you'll have a really bomb silk press. It's all of that prep work was done prior to sitting your client underneath the dryer. But what you'll see me doing, like I said, is just gonna seal in some more sheen and make the hair feel silky and give off a traditional old school wrap. It's just a modern version of it to where your client is not in the salon all day and literally um, sitting underneath the dryer for like five hours. So that's really what it is. So you'll just wrap your client's hair like you see me doing now. Some people like to take saran wrap and then some people like to take a plastic cap. Um, I do it either way. Um, and then also what it's gonna do, is gonna help to seal your clients in. So that's why it's really important to come in on a regular basis and get treatments done. 
Um, but other than that, you guys will notice like how flowy and how silky and how bouncy your client's hair is once you're completely done. I usually like to take the big um, bobby pins as you see me doing now, and I like to hold the wrap in place before I put on either the plastic cap or the saran wrap. Um, put um, either one of those on and that's what's going to lock the wrap in place and, and seal everything in. It's kind of like the, the top coat, if you will. So after your client has sat underneath the dryer for about five minutes, you really don't want your client to sit underneath the dryer any longer than that. You can you can kind of gauge your clients and you can determine how long they sit underneath there. Rule of thumb, if, uh, if your clients uh, tend to sweat easily in their scalp, um, you really don't want them to be under there that long because what's going to happen is that they're going to start sweating in their scalp while they're underneath the dryer and it's going to cause their hair to get wet and you have just defeated the purpose of them being underneath the dryer for a silk wrap so it's very key kind of watch your clients you'll be able to determine on a client by client basis how long they should be underneath there um, but once uh, they come out just comb the wrap out and you can see like how it seals everything in how your client's hair is just nice and bouncy and what a difference um, the client's hair looked like and opposed to when you started until now so hopefully you guys like what you saw um, if you um, have any questions or concerns leave them in the comment box below and please depend because I am new to YouTube and I'm trying to try this thing out y'all um, if you're wanting specific videos or tutorials, please hit me up. Uh, put them in the comment section below. I will definitely read and comment or respond to you, everyone um, as time permits. Um, and then we will go from there. I will go ahead and top off my client's hair by adding a little edge control, which you guys will see me using here. My favorite brand is Hicks Total Edge Control. So I will take a little bit of this. I only use a little bit because I don't like to use a lot of products in my client's hair. Um, I like for my clients to have flowy, bouncy, silky, smooth hair. Um, so putting a lot of edge control is going to defeat the purpose. Um, if, you, if you guys will notice, a little bit goes a long way too. And then I like to take this care kit stick, the wax stick. And if you have any flyaways, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that the camera really didn't capture this. If you have any flyaways, you just graze the top of their head and kind of um, go from there. Kind of smooths and seals in everything on top. 